Hello and welcome to today's discussion on reimagining work in the connected factory. Today's manufacturing enterprises must move faster and make decisions more rapidly in a highly complex and uncertain environment filled with more data but less insight. In general, lean concepts have been applied to information sharing and communications processes on the factory floor, leaving a great deal of process latency still to be removed. Fortunately, mobile devices, social and collaboration technology, and business analytics for the masses can drive continuous improvement Kaizen initiatives forward, helping to streamline factory operations, improve qu quality, and enhance team coordination for faster problem awareness, understanding, and resolution. During today's discussion, you'll hear from manufacturing leaders from Toyota and Dana Holding Corporation who are creating digital nervous systems for their operations, connecting workers to the factory level with always-on access to the information they need when they need it, eliminating manual paper-based processes, and enabling greater employee collaboration to quickly and effectively solve problems. My name is John Minnick. I'm the Associate Editor of Manufacturing Business Technology here representing Manufacturing.net, and I'll be today's moderator. Today we have three speakers with us. First is Indranil Sakar, Industry Technology Strategist for Discrete Manufacturing with Microsoft. We also have Kevin Purdy, General Manager and Chief Technology Officer with Toyota Engineering and Manufacturing North America. And finally, we have Matt Meyer, Senior Director of IT with Dana Holding Corporation. Before we begin the presentation, I would like to provide you with a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a task bar. Each icon on the task bar is assigned with a particular element of today's webinar. If you are unsure about what an icon does, hover over the icon with your mouse and a box will pop up that tells you the function. Below the presenter photos, there is a blank question box that allows you to type a question in the box and hit the submit button to send it to us. Later in this live program, our presenters will address as many questions as possible. Today's event is also being recorded and archived. All registered participants will receive an email within one to two business days that has a link to view a recording of this event. And now I'm thrilled to turn over uh, our, to our first speaker, Indranil Sikhar. Um, thank you, John. Um, uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon uh, to all the um, um, audience. Um, um, uh, what I want to do over the next 15, 20 minutes um, is uh, share with you some of the industry trends and how it is uh, affecting the manufacturing industry and also um, highlight how companies are adopting and improving their productivity within their environment. Uh, we will, as, as John mentioned, we will also hear from Kevin and Matt later on their experiences on how they are adopting. Um, so it's basically we'll uh, highlight both of those aspects of it. And what I, what I would also do is share with you where Microsoft and what Microsoft is doing uh, uh, in this particular area. Um, so. Uh, we are all familiar with the, uh, the big shift um, and the forces that are driving transformation in today's industry. Uh, with a clear shift in power towards the consumer, as we have uh, been continuously uh, observing that, uh, we are, the industry is also looking at ways uh, to engage not just with the customers but across their entire value chain. Um, that means to enhance that experience uh, further. Um, develop the agility to ever shifting that business needs that are coming up, and how do they, how are they able to uh, adapt to some of those um, uh, those those requirements of those changes? We are also seeing uh, a shift from outside in perspective, uh, with today's consumers expecting more from their connected experiences. Uh, businesses are also trying to see how they were able to deliver towards that uh, goal. Uh, for industry, it is not just about manufacturing, but it is also to deal with the global footprint. Um, and, and what we also uh, look at it from the creating uh, an environment where the millennials uh, that can be attracted to be able to uh, drive and deliver and build towards the knowledge uh, that, has been, uh, that has been the core of the enterprises um, uh, of today. And so, so these, are, these are definitely an important um, shift, and uh, what we need to understand is how they are impacting and how we are able to take advantage of that. Uh, so one of, the, one of the things that we um, also know is the, the challenges. 
you know, these are some of the common challenges. We know much about that. Uh, what, what we want to also look at it is that the transformative objectives that each of the organizations have. Like clearly, with more factories adopting, you know, machine to machine and digital processes that are replacing uh, manual processes, the need is to improve the people processes to address the gaps in execution. Um, similarly, for example, um, I'll just give an example, um, improving communication and collaboration for um, easy way of addressing common tasks, problem identification and resolution. Um, and people have been, uh, devel have been using that, but they have been developing to the next level. Um, this could be in the form of collaborating, let's say, with an equipment vendor on the, uh, across the globe, uh, sharing the information in, in form of a voice, video, or data in reducing the downtime. You know. uh, and we have, we have seen some great examples uh, across the globe on how some of these things are evolving um, with initiatives like Industry 4.0 um, in other parts of the world, um, et cetera. Now, the other, other aspect of it is obviously uh, to look at um, uh, finding expertise um, um, and the knowledge that would add to this transformative um, approach. Um, this would also require ability to capture data and the knowledge in a systemic way or what we call the, the tribal knowledge um, with easy access uh, for the employees, for all employees. Uh, and, and so these are some of the objectives. Um, and and um, let's see how some of these things are um, actually achieved. Now, um, we all know and understand fairly well the various um, uh, technology mega trends um, that are um, that will dominate over the next uh, decade. Um, you know, mobility, social, cloud, and data. Um, the the key would be to see how they are leveraged in a way that supports the business transformation um, objectives. Um, it's on how businesses will innovate. Um, their ability to deliver products and services on time, um, how they can engage with each other um, um, across the value chain, um, at the same time drive reliability and build resiliency. Uh, over the next few slides, actually, I will uh, share some of these mega trends and how it is uh, evolving and in today's manufacturing environment. And so here is um, an example of um, of a new work style now. Um, as I mentioned that, you know, it's an outside-in effect. We as consumers have the experience of uh, using uh, today's um, connected experiences um, as a consumer. And we try, tend to utilize many of the same uh, approaches in our business environment today. You know, uh, we for sure have multiple devices um, that we use. Um, at the same time, we utilize within the business context too. Um, so uh, here's an example um, of a plant manager who would be utilizing the cell phone, which is uh, one of the common things that we all use as a smartphone today. Um, in the first thing in the morning, we might actually be looking at what my schedule is. Um, utilize that to um, you know, plan my day ahead. Um, and in the office, I'll be using my um, computer, uh, desktop, or it could be even a mobile device, another device, a tablet, to look into various KPIs and the tasks that are important for my day. Um, attend a meeting remotely and, you know, being able to share um, a live experience of, uh, you know, utilizing the data in a much more uh, quality way of keeping people engaged in through animations and other ways and how people are utilizing some of these things today. Now, uh, during this period of time, there could be different things that might be happening in the production environment. For example, an alert uh, from an equipment that might be sent out to the uh, plant manager um, on a downtime that might be affecting. Um, plant manager could actually utilize the same device or, or on a phone uh, if he's actually remote uh, to communicate with the supervisor in understanding where what problem is and how, what the remediations um, actions that might need to be taken. Um, and, and that's that's where the communication can start playing a role. That means there is no gap. There is a much more faster way of reacting to some of the problems that are occurring. Now, it's also possible uh, to be able to look into the uh, various aspects of the data, um, for example, and overall equipment efficiency or the production rate or the quality issues um, from a big data perspective. And that's, again, another aspect of the uh, big data within the uh, context of those four bigger trends that we talked about and ability for the end users to have that uh, visualized and be able to react to some of those aspects too. 
Lastly, what we also see is being able to capture the idea of what the problem was and what, how it was solved or any other thoughts around it. Now, this could become part of a, a larger context of, let's say, a Kaizen process, of an improvement process that could then be captured within the context of a social uh, framework. Um, and that's where this knowledge now gets converted more from an implicit to an explicit knowledge that could be shareable, searched, and utilized for future usage. So here what we are seeing is that this is almost like a new work style where we are using not just one device but multiple devices doing different things during different time of the day. Now, this is only one role. So obviously it needs certain framework and certain foundations that will drive that aspect of it. So when we look into um, the, the various building blocks um, that Microsoft um, um, uh, Microsoft's vision um, around productivity uh, is uh, today. It's actually in four different areas. It's about first is about the natural expression. Um, it's about you know um, being able to provide the experience on anywhere, any device, um, and and provide it as much as in a natural expression. It could be in the form of a touch, ink, and voice. And so uh, people who are comfortable using different form and the mode, they would be able to utilize the same um, approach. Uh, social plays a significant role, and social, when we refer to social, it's not just about, um, you know, um, the, the social, uh, the enterprise social, um, the ability to share um, knowledge, but it is also about sharing information to be able to do real-time collaboration, uh, uh, whiteboarding and uh, capturing ideas, um, ability to even I identify and have the voice and the video and the web conferencing all integrated together within that whole experience. And they all play an important role there. Um, insight plays an important role. This is where the big data ability to connect with the small or the big data, um, reporting and analysis, the um, ability for um, end users to use natural um, language query to be able to get to the data very quickly or uh, do the visualization in a much more rich uh, way of ex uh, experiencing that. But to support all of these things, the the, uh, the, the whole aspect around the empowerment, responsible empowerment through device and data protection has to play a role because we are talking about in a very different way on how we are going to do the business. It is no more constrained within the uh, env uh, environment of the four walls of an enterprise. And so that's an important consideration that needs to be looked at it. And so these are some of the building blocks. And so what we have done is we have looked at this uh, more from the context of a role-based productivity platform. And uh, when we think of manufacturing, we look at the four elements of it, which is about the people, process, asset, and insight. And so a role is part of that people. It a person can be in multiple roles, and here you, what you see is the workspace. A workspace is more like it is organized based on the um, uh, functionally it is organized based on the operational need of a particular role, uh, where in this case, let's say, a supervisor, he would be managing his team and all the tasks that are associated with the team, ability to connect to them, their presence, where they are available, or managing their training, their, um, their um, onboarding, or for that matter, any kind of incident that might actually Actually happen within the context of the factory. They are all available to them within the click um, uh, click of this particular workspace. Um, at the same time, ability to access other line of business applications, whether it is an uh, ERP or an MRP platform, or being able to pull that data from an inside perspective and being able to analyze from a different KPIs. Those are all part of the overall uh, workspace um, environment. So here are some of the examples of how it might be then extended to other areas. So let's take the example within the plant floor level, the line worker or a technician. They might be utilizing uh, during their break a, um, an environment where they can go in and access the information, take their training, um, get to know what is happening within the, from the context of an uh, enterprise uh, or rather the company's um, overall vision. Um, and perform certain HR functions. Now, for a technician, this could be even more important because now what you're doing is you're enabling them with a mobile device that would allow them to not just uh, be able to um, uh, access the information in right time, let's say a visual manual, or be able to contact a supplier on the other end of the world um, and have that dialogue on a voice video uh, perspective, or even capture the image and annotate and post that as part of a dialogue in terms of how you're solving the problem. This could 
would be within the context of a Kaizen process that might be taking. Now, all of these actually eventually leads to benefits that a organizations might be actually having. For example, it will lead to an overall equipment effectiveness because you're able to solve the problem faster, you're able to identify the problem, and not just that, you're basically creating a knowledge that is able to be utilized by others at the same time. Similarly, on some of the other uh, functions, for example, um, um, email, you know, we, we, we still continue to use, a lot of people will use email going forward, and email will continue to be an important uh, way of communication, and so here we are able to provide uh, that same functionality anywhere, anytime, whether it is on a device or, um, you know, um, or ability to even have the alerts being sent on a device um, onto the email so that they could be able to access it at a faster um, um, in, in the timely manner, primarily. Um, on another aspect of it, what we also see is, for example, um, self-service training and reporting. Now, this could be, um, as such, a, uh, a training portal, um, an external training application. It could be built within the context of the SharePoint applications that we have today uh, within Microsoft. Um, but what it provides is a very easy way for everybody to access, go through the training, uh, keep a score on the training, because many of these trainings are important from a safety, health and safety objectives perspective. And so that becomes a core part of the overall uh, scenario again. And on, at the same rate, we would be able to track the incidents that are happening in the plant level uh, on a timely manner, because again, these are part of the overall uh, requirements uh, within the work environment and uh, awareness aspect of it. And so that's another example of it. Um, uh, lastly, um, um, what I would um, uh, share is the social aspect of it. And we always talk about, you know, the social probably is a much more difficult to implement, it, but it has its role within the manufacturing context. Uh, a, a, a simple example, being able to share, um, search and share, um, in fact, um, uh, for similar problems that might have occurred. And it's provided you are able to find those if somebody else has also found a similar problem elsewhere and you are able to search that. But there are other usage also. For example, in a Kaizen context, there could be multiple, you know, many Kaizen pro projects that are in, uh, in, uh, today in, in, in your environment you might actually have closed groups that are used by these small teams of people coming together and capturing on their experience uh, combined with the project and all the documents. And that's an important uh, consideration over here. You can also create networks of people external, like with the vendor, and able to share with the vendor without sharing many of the internal informations what you have over here. And I think that is one of the great examples of how social can be really very effective within the context of an uh, enterprise. Now, to summarize, um, um, you know, um, I think one of the things that we probably want to understand is that um, uh, collaboration and communications will uh, continue to play a key role in a connected factory. If not, it will enhance that experience even further. Um, empowering employees in their ability to share, find experience, and leading to creation of a more explicit knowledge. Uh, we will see that happening over a period of time. I think that will be, uh, that's probably one of the uh, best way how uh, things like social can be leveraged. Um, use of new technology, for example, uh, being able to utilize the big data or the cloud sharing, um, and, and the experience in creating new solutions and services from an organization perspective. Um, that will be an important consideration, too. And lastly, you know, finally, giving your employees a voice and encourage them to make that difference is the um, other aspect, that they are part of a larger organization. And so we see that these are all the trends that are basically driving. And so um, that's the broad overview, and I will pass this over to John uh, for the next set of data. Well, we'd now like to talk to Kevin Purdy and Matt Meyer about their experience with the Connected Factory. Uh, let's start first with Kevin. Uh, can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your company and your role? Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, let me start off. Uh, I'm responsible for technology for Toyota Engineering and Manufacturing across North America. Uh, that's technology not only in the office and the multiple data centers that we have, but also uh, in the engineering side as well as on the plant floor. I also have a member with me today, uh, Jay Shelton. He is our manager of client services, and he was our program manager for our Office 365 implementation. Hello, everybody. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, well, let's move over to Matt then. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your company and your role? Sure, John, thanks. I'll, I'll start with a little summary of, of Dana. Um, Dana is a world leader in the vehicle driveline, ceiling, and heat management solutions for automotive, commercial vehicle, and off-highway vehicle markets. We're probably not a household name for, for most of the folks on the, on the phone, but we've been around for a long time. In fact, over, over 100 years, and we're, we're a very well-known brand in the markets that we serve. Um, we've got a very vast global footprint, over 90 facilities in 26 countries, and we've got customers in, in over 125 countries uh, around the world. Um, you know, of those 91 facilities, we've got uh, 15 engineering centers, and we really try to follow a, a um, follow the sun, you know, design and, and build anywhere approach as, as much as as much as we can. Um, we're about 23,000 people globally. And in terms of my role, I'm responsible for IT for our light vehicle driveline business, which is essentially our auto business, which represents about 50% of our uh, global revenue. Okay, well, let's move on to our next question. Uh, you know, today's discussion is all about leveraging technology to drive business performance improvement, particularly in manufacturing, manufacturing operations. Can you please describe the challenges your company was facing, and particularly in the area of manufacturing operations? And we'll start with Matt on this one. Sure, John. So as I mentioned, we've got a very uh, vast, diverse global footprint and a lot of complex uh, product programs going on across our many facilities for many global customers at any given time, um, including our many engineering centers as well. So it's a lot of stakeholders to keep coordinated to ensure we're meeting customer expectations on uh, quoting and time to quote, product launch, and then once we get into operations mode, um, quality of, of delivery and, and on-time delivery. And so ensuring that we stay all linked up on the myriad of activities on any given day required to meet those customer expectations is, is certainly a, a significant challenge for us. Um, Along those lines, I mean, our, our workforce is becoming increasingly mobile, as you, as you might imagine, and the expectations of that mobile workforce are, are increasing all the time relative to expectation that, you know, data to do, uh, do your job is available anytime, anywhere, basically from, from any device uh, that you might have on your person at the time. Uh, Kevin, what was the situation at Toyota? Okay, well, we're always striving for quality. I think everybody knows that about Toyota. Uh, and as we continuously, I guess, increase our global footprint uh, and increase our production, you know, of course, that makes it more difficult uh, to maintain that quality. So I'm going to touch on a key aspect that Toyota tries to follow. It's called Genba. Uh, and Genba is basically means factory floor, you know, in lean manufacturing. You know, it's making problems visible. We also have something called Gimba Walk. So our management actually walks around, you know, they look for wastes and opportunities. And so by doing that, we need to make sure information is made available or visible to our workers, whether they be on the plant floor, whether they be in the office, whether they're traveling. So, you know, we're always looking for efficiencies, you know, to help improve our processes. Those processes that are improved, uh, in turn, help us improve our quality. So most of those things are around mobility, and I'm going to touch on those as we uh, move forward in the webcast. But you know, I'm just sort of trying to state that those are the type of things trying to make the data, you know, improve data availability, uh, improved efficiencies and processes, and improved quality are the uh, actual challenges that we're facing and trying to address uh, within Toyota. What solutions did you decide to implement as part of your workplace of the future, and how do you expect these solutions to contribute to business success? Uh, and Kevin, we'll start with you on this one. Okay. So first, of course, we implemented Office 365 with Microsoft. Uh, that included email and calendaring uh, via Outlook. Uh, we also implemented Link uh, and SharePoint. Uh, we had many, uh, you know, we did the office upgrades, uh, IE upgrades. We added smart devices. 
Uh, we implemented uh, BI or business intelligence for mobile. Uh, we had a we did a lot of efficiencies to the plant floor. So you know, just an example uh, that we're in progress with now is uh, it's like called a group leader portal. Group leaders are the individuals who oversee things uh, out on the uh, the plant floor, uh, giving them single source access. You know, to improve safety and quality and productivity uh, around mobility. You know, being able to uh, allow access to data, you know, to improve vehicle location visibility, or reducing our inspection times, or having more accurate repairs, uh, actually reducing walk times. Uh, those are the things that we have uh, seen. And then also, uh, we're implementing the link displays. Uh, those actually are Microsoft displays that have built-in uh, Windows PCs, if you want to call it, uh, whether you want to use those for video peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, markups, those type of things. We're trying to you know, roll those out now uh, and maybe use those instead of video conferencing, or you can use those for multi-purpose. So those are just a few of the things that we're using uh, today and uh, will be in the future. Matt, what solutions did you implement, and what do you see as the benefits? Thank you. I think uh, similar to what Kevin shared. I mean, we've. Uh, I don't think we're as far along in our in our journey as Toyota may be at this point in time. But um, we've implemented Office 365, SharePoint, and Link, and uh, we've added Project Online actually to help with the uh, the management of these global programs I talked about for product launch. Um, you know, so what what these tools are enabling for us broadly at the at the program management level is real-time access to information from stakeholders all over the world relative to the tasks that they're responsible for uh, and when, and then dashboard reporting that our business unit executives and executive committee folks can see at any given time relative to program health. Um, and, you know, this is, this is available, like I said, anytime, anywhere, as people are going into Ford, Chrysler, or others, um, they know where the programs stand uh, and the health of those programs as well as the customer perception. So that's it's pretty powerful uh, capability that we're we're finding. Although we're, as I said, we're just we're just really getting started, um, but already reaping some benefits there. I think if you if you go down to within the four walls of the plant, um, what we're what we're trying to see um, benefits from is using these same solutions for managing, well, simply plant communications. So plant managers are using blogs and other social tools to communicate to their staff on. Um, events in the plant, priorities of the plant, um, events in the in the company more broadly. Um, we're using the same tools at the enterprise level for the portal, which is kind of the, the broader communications to the masses. Uh, and we're beginning to use uh, the same solution set for the tracking of plant KPIs. So daily tracking of safety, quality, delivery, uh, and productivity metrics at the plant level that uh, are shared obviously with the plant stakeholders, but also again, at the business unit level. So that, that information is available not just to the plant managers, but to those who, who have got remit for operations more broadly. Um, what role did the non-IT business parts of the company play in the decision and implementation process? And Matt, we'll start with you on this one. Yeah, that, that's actually a good question. Um, as, a, as an IT leader within Dana, um, you know, our, our vision for these tools is really to, to set the foundation and, and, and get out of the way. Um, really, we, what we're trying to do is help our, our business stakeholders uh, and working with partners on this as well to help with art of the possible. Um, setting up pilot implementations of this and trying to put the tools in the hands of the users. So, in fact, they govern, you know, how they're used and then how they're deployed. Um, you know, so in light vehicle driveline, which is, you know, my area of responsibility, we're trying to use the operations teams there as kind of the, the, the benchmark that then will, you know, the other business units will, will, uh, will take on and adopt. And the thought being that our super users we develop really help with training other super users in the business units. So again, I, IT is more in a facilitating role here than a, implementation and, and driving of the program. We're trying to have the, the business, I'll say in quotes, kind of pull and, and drive the implementation and adoption of these tools. Kevin, how was the business side of the company engaged in these initiatives? 
Okay, I'm going to turn that question over to Jay Shelton. So the, the key with the engagement of the business in, in our Office 365 deployment was to get, uh, gain executive management buy-in uh, first and foremost. Um, and then we utilized our groups like HR and communications to continually get our message out of what we were doing and how we were progressing our Workplace of the Future initiatives. Uh, we continued to reach out to the business through what we call our business champions or our power users. Um, they helped us with unique requirement gathering, early adopter usage, and then ultimately uh, piloting and testing the, the final solution before we rolled out to the masses. Uh, what guidance do you have for our audience around best practices for a successful implementation? Kevin, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so first and foremost, making sure that you have a top-down executive sponsorship. Uh, that's probably one of the most important, making sure they're uh, aware. They don't have to know every, every detail, but they need to be aware of the benefits that this will bring to the company. Uh, having a strong program manager, uh, I was very lucky to have Jay uh, as my program manager, uh, someone with a lot of experience uh, that is able to lead you through some uncharted waters. Uh, also, the business engagement, making sure that they also have the buy-in. So again, that's coming down from that top-down approach. Uh, not sacrificing quality over timing. You know, everybody sees this all the time. You know, we need to rush. We need to make this happen. There was many times that, you know, we could have pushed forward to meet a date, but what we wanted to make sure is we rolled out a quality solution and we didn't have any impact to the users. Uh, so that was very key. It was almost like our, our vision and mission to make that happen. Uh, and then making sure that we uh, leveraged high-level Microsoft experts. I don't mean you have to have everybody in the team from Microsoft, but there's going to be those key individuals that will really save you a lot of time and effort uh, by utilizing them. Uh, making sure that you commit your organization to this. So what I mean by that is don't just assign somebody 10% of, uh, of their daily work towards this activity. You need to make sure that you've got commitments from individuals, the appropriate individuals are assigned, and they can apply 100% focus on that. Uh, don't cut corners. You know, I see people cut corners all the time. Hey, I can save 20%. I can save 10000 or 80000 by doing this. You know, sometimes saving money actually cost you more money in the long run. So, you know, make sure you know what you're doing when you're trying to cut your costs. Uh, having a good solid plan uh, and making sure you have checkpoints along the way. Toyota uses something called PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Action. That check is very important. Make sure that along the way you, you have built-in checkpoints. Uh, and then start off with uh, small increments, you know, and roll out to a larger scale as you get comfortable. You know, it doesn't mean you've got to roll out, you know, a thousand users. You know, roll out 20 to a pilot group, then 50, then 100. You know, then you can see what's that do to your infrastructure. You know, what's that do to your help desk. Uh, and then, you know, the bubble desk. What we did is we actually increased our help desk uh, to handle those additional calls so the user wouldn't have to wait uh, if there was some kind of issue. Uh, the last point that I'll bring up is around training. Uh, I'll tell you the goods and bads. We didn't, we trained, we offered many different solutions to people. Uh, we had online training, classroom training, uh, paper, you know, manuals that we sent to people. We had very low participation rate. And when people would call, we would recognize that they had not taken the training or not read the materials. So if I had to reflect back on this, make it mandatory. And then the user has no excuse. You know, you will actually reduce your calls, you would reduce your problems, and the user will actually be much more satisfied. Matt, do you have any implementation best practices you want to share? Sure, I, I agree with uh, all the points Kevin made, so I'll, I'll try not to be redundant, but maybe a, maybe a couple additional. I think, uh, you know, one of the points I made earlier um, for the for the IT folks in the audience is is try to develop an approach where you know you're not necessarily on critical path, and that you know this is business led transformation, and you're really putting the tools in the hands of the business business folks to you know lead lead their initiatives and uh, lead the transformation 
associated with the tools. I think that would be one. Um, I will reiterate uh, Kevin's point on taking an incremental approach. This is, the whole space is new to us as a company, and so we've really tried to use pilots and improve small successes that then can turn into larger successes uh, later. So I think that's a, that's a very important one. Um, do some benchmarking, too. I mean, we, we took the time to talk to other folks that are further along in the journey. We found we were a bit bleeding edge in, in some areas, but in most areas, people have been there, done that. Um, so I think, you know, go out, talk to other people, talk to Microsoft about who in your industry or who, who else you might be able to collaborate with in terms of how they've used the tools successfully. And then, you know, I, the, the point on training, very valid. We, we haven't really cracked the nut on that one yet, so we'd probably be looking for help from even the audience on, you know, how to, how to best do that. And, and another area that I think um, we're, we're just starting to get, uh, get some traction on is really the governance of all this. So very powerful tools. Um, a lot of it is self-service. How do you really make sure that you're, you're managing the environment appropriately with, without, again, getting in the way, I think is, uh, is something that everybody is probably going to need to wrestle with as, as they embark on this journey. Well, let's discuss next steps. Uh, what are your future plans with a connected factory? Matt, we'll start with you on this. Yeah, as I as I mentioned before, I mean our our business unit is really leading the charge, you know, at the, at the manufacturing level. So I think the capabilities that we that we prove out in the automotive business unit, we will we will look to expand uh, to the other business units. Um, you know, a lot of what we're doing now is, I will say, frankly, not that sophisticated from an integration standpoint. I mean, we're, we're uploading data wherever we can and by, by whatever means. And, um, but I think there's a lot of opportunities down the road for integration with our um, shop floor controls um, so that you're getting, in fact, you know, real-time production reporting, quality reporting, and sharing that. Um, I think that's going to drive a, a lot of value down the road. Um, at the at the corporate level, you know, we're partnering with corporate communications on how to roll these capabilities out to all back office uh, functions in the company. You know, so that's you know, that's going to be a multi-year journey in and of itself. Um, and I think really putting these tools, you know, at the forefront of everybody's uh, you know working life is really kind of a broad next step. Uh, I think a couple other things that we've seen at the at the operations level as opportunities beyond what I what I've talked about is really using the tools for better training um, and compliance. I think, you know, as as Kevin said, training is a challenge. I think these tools themselves um, can enable training of the workforce on, on the usage of, of the very tools themselves. Um, opportunity for in station work instructions, you know, on the shop floor. And I, I think um, you know, Ingenel hit on it earlier around the expert finder capability. I think we recognize that as a as a, a possibility, right? A lot of it is just kind of through social networks, through traditional means. But I think finding experts across our you know many facilities and in certain engineering spaces or manufacturing uh, domains, I think is something else that we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of value in uh, longer term. Uh, Kevin, any Toyota future plans with a connected factor you'd want, want to share with the audience? Yeah, I'm going to let Jay Shelton touch on that. So our, our next steps are uh, Office 365 upgrades to the 2013 backends for SharePoint and Link and Exchange. We'll also be doing Office 2013 upgrades as well. Uh, we're continuing to do uh, affiliate and company expansion uh, on, on the um, Microsoft suite and platform. Uh, which includes also uh, Internet Explorer upgrades, uh, and we're also enabling federation across Toyota linking on-premise installations with Office 365. Well, is there anything else to add that we haven't covered so far? Matt, we'll start with you. You know, I, I think, um, you know, one of the other things we might touch on is, you know, ensuring that you're, you've got real business objectives associated with, with the use of the solutions. And, you know, for us, uh, you know, some of the things that we're thinking about and, and we'll be measuring as we, as we go forward are, you know, the impact on, on time to quote to our customers, 
time to launch to our customers, quality of launch, you know, PPMs and the like. And as, as data becomes more visible on a, on a fluid basis in terms of our, our KPIs, what impact you know, are these tools actually going to have on safety, quality, delivery, productivity, the other things that, that we measure ourselves on. So I think that's probably something to keep, uh, keep on the forefront just as, as folks move forward as well. How about you, Kevin? Anything else important that you'd like to add? Well, the one thing that I probably will add is I know when Toyota went through this, you know, we were we, we were a little bit concerned, and we just wanted to apply our normal Toyota practices to this. So we ended up being one of the most successful Office 365 implementations uh, that Microsoft, uh, you know, had experienced. And the things that I'll, I'd like to just share a few things, uh, maybe that is in summary here. You know, again, and it, it touches on some of the things that I said earlier. You know, we made sure that we had the right people assigned to the project. We, what well, we have something called JKK, and it really means built-in quality. So we wanted to make sure as we went forward, you know, we built in quality, and that's what I meant by not sacrificing quantity over quality, uh, and then always do that reflect and improve, you know, do those incremental migration reflections. Uh, we also have something called Nimiwashi. That's where we're sharing, we're sharing our plans, we're sharing our problems as we go forward. You know, a lot of people hide, you know, their issues. We bring those out. We make those, vi those visual. You know, we have wall charts up on the wall that, you know, any time we could look at, you know, where we're at in a project, what the problems are. So, you know, make sure that the management levels at all levels, not just your frontline, first line managers, but your system managers, managers, general managers, vice president, they should all be aware of the activity because then when they see others, they're able to talk about it. Um, and, you know, the, the last thing I'd say is we, you know, just communicate. You know, the users like to be communicated. If you're going to miss a date, but you communicate and say, you know what, I was doing this so we wouldn't have this issue, uh, and I'm trying to protect whether it be your calendar or whether it be, you know, the archival of this data, you know, they really appreciate that. So, you know, those are just some of the things, and, you know, listen to the customer, and that will go a long way, whether it's with a project like what we're talking about or you know, any kind of project that you're working on, those are you know, some best practices that I'd like to share. Well, thank you. Uh, we'll now open up the discussion to uh, Q&A. Um, just a reminder to everybody listening that below the presenter photo, there is a blank questions box that allows you to type in a question in the box and then hit submit to send it to us. Uh, the first question for our panelists is, how long did it did it take you to migrate to this solution? So for, for Toyota, if you want me to go ahead and answer that, it, it took between 14 and 16 months for us to do that in a controlled manner. Yeah, we're I would say we're very similar in that regard. I mean, our our migration to Office 365, um, you know, Outlook coming from a Lotus Notes environment was a was a good you know six months journey, um, and and we're taking a very incremental approach. I think in terms of sort of the application space and how we're using these tools now in a in a business context, uh, the more general purpose tools outside of of email and. Office. Um, so, you know, I, we're measuring implementation, I would say, anywhere between like four and 16 weeks, depending on what we're trying to, trying to actually accomplish um, with each project. Um, how did you measure the impact and return on investment for this investment? So for Toyota, one of the things that, that we had put into our ROI, and we're still calculating that. We've been in full production for, for almost a year, but uh, the productivity and efficiency gains were expected to be anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes uh, per day per user. Um, so we've, uh, we're definitely on target to, to exceed our, 
our uh, five-year ROI. Yeah, and um, this is Matt from Dana. I mean, we, we are not as far along, as I mentioned before, so we're, we are clearly still calculating it. But we, we expect gains in, you know, time to quote um, for uh, customer opportunity assessments, um, time to launch, uh, quality metrics. We expect uh, improvements is based on the, the improved communication. And, and as, as Kevin said, I mean, the, the visibility of issues on a more real-time basis. And then I guess time will tell, um, again, as we have better visibility of our plant metrics, the impacts on uh, safety, quality, delivery, productivity, you know, within the four walls and across the business unit. But we do expect, uh, we do expect gains there as well. Um, was security a concern when getting data to the people, and how did you address this? This is uh, this is this is Matt again. I think that was a was an initial real concern for us. Um, but you know, we we worked with Microsoft and had our IT security folks really vet the solutions and and got comfortable pretty quick. And I think one of the things that got us, I would say, most comfortable is the fact that we were not even close to first to the party on on most of these solutions. So I mean, there were. Many companies much larger than us that were already, you know, using this on a on a much more regular basis, and and the Microsoft stack, and I think uh, beyond our own vetting, knowing that other companies that are even more complex than than us and larger than us had had gotten over that hump helped us as well. For Toyota, our security is is of critical importance, um, and we uh, had uh, our risk management group uh, evaluate uh, the secure connections that we had into Microsoft. I mean, they, they need to be able to see things like retrieve logs and know who, uh, who did what activities when. Um, we uh, did go and seize to the data centers uh, to understand how physical security and all the other aspects of security would be around the hosted infrastructure and data that Toyota um, houses specifically we're in a dedicated office 365 environment so so that gives us uh, a, an also a higher degree of separation around security what was the hardest part of solution adoption for the users so I'll start with Toyota of course not many people like change so Probably the hardest part was, you know, we did multiple things at the same time. You know, we did Windows 7, you know, then we, you know, the office uh, upgrades, and then, you know, even with the IE. So some of those changes, maybe they didn't like it. They just expected it to work like the previous versions. And as I mentioned, you know, the train, even offering the training and all of that uh, in all kinds of different methods. They just opted not to take that. So if you had to ask me what they didn't like or what was the most difficult, is them being able to use the tools that we provided. And it was a, a double-edged sword. You've got the young generation coming in, the millennials, expecting these tools. You know, people coming out of college going, okay, you're asking me to use a tool that's less than what I was using in college. So. You know, you can't make everybody happy, but, you know, continuing to move the business forward, you know, we knew we had to do that. But, uh, again, the biggest challenge for our users was trying to use these new tools. But, again, it was because they didn't actually do the training and uh, take advantage of what we put in front of them. Yeah, I, this is Matt. I would agree <clears throat> with Kevin's points and, you know, just in – in short, ours has really been, um, especially with the, I would say, maybe older workforce um, at Dana broadly, just understanding art of the possible and just, you know, the basic, what can I do with this stuff? Um, any change is going to be going to be tough in a large organization. Um, so I think, you know, a focus on training, um, having help uh, accessible on a, on a ready basis is, is going to help with that. But we've, we've struggled just with basic adoption and, frankly, broadly just understanding you know what we can do 
um, with all of these tools, and you know we're still sorting sorting through that, even our our vision for the future on this. Now, pilot groups of twenty were mentioned as a starting point. Uh, how many are now connected at, at the, each of your companies and both within individual facilities and connectedness between multiple locations and facilities? This is Jay Shelton from Toyota. Um, so uh, right now in our Office 365 uh, installation here in North America, we've got about uh, 34,000 users that are uh, using that solution. And we're connecting in some uh, additional companies and affiliates uh, now that will ramp that up to about 45,000 users in the next uh, three to six months. Yeah, at, at Dana, we've got um, Outlook and, and 365 rolled out to circa 10,000 users on a global basis. And you know, some of our initial pilots on, on SharePoint and, and Project include uh, numbers in the hundreds um, at a time. So, you know, where we where we piloted some of the plant metrics initially was uh, one of our plants here in the U.S. You know, circa 150 or so users, and our our program management um, team that's really using these solutions for managing um, you know programs around the globe. Numbers in the in the few hundred. Um, one of the audience members is looking for some clarity. Our both companies using Office 365 and also native applications at the same time, and so are all users. Do all users have both platforms, or is there just some misunderstanding there? From Toyota's perspective, we have uh, hybrid environments globally. Uh, some uh, regions are using on-premise SharePoints and Exchange and Link. Uh, technologies and right now North America is uh, standardized on Office 365, um, but we're looking to expand that. So uh, ideally, um, from a, a long-term cost uh, perspective, we're, we're we're looking to reduce our on-premise footprint. Yeah, we we at Dana also have a mix, and I think frankly the. You know why we do is with concern um, on, you know, am I still going to be able to operate the same way I did if I'm using a cloud solution? So I'd say the vast majority of our users are, you know, Office 365 in the cloud. Uh, we still have some on-premise uh, implementations around that we're looking to to move to the cloud over time. But it was it was largely a, a concern around adoption that led us there. Not any not any technical constraint. Uh, this question is for Kevin. Who were the key MS experts role-wise that you mentioned? Okay, so there's, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to use names uh, on here, but uh, this person was from Microsoft, and I, I'm going to go ahead and say his name. Uh, his name was Mark Resig. He was very instrumental in working with us as we migrated from Lotus Notes to uh, Exchange. There were certain things that this individual knew by going through many implementations prior. And, you know, he's probably at a, I want to say at an architect level. You know, I'm not sure what, uh, what actual title that individual has in Microsoft. But, you know, it's one of the higher level resources that you, that you, you obtain from Microsoft. And a lot of people, when they hear, oh, this person's X amount of dollars per hour, I, I can tell you that, it's, it's very well worth it. Uh, and Toyota, you know, we're always very, you know, we run very lean, you know, we're very efficient. We look for, you know, uh, resources that are, are economical. And, you know, it's difficult for us to bring in a person of that caliber. But it was very, it, I think it was really one of our key success factors uh, by doing this. And the person's knowledge, it wasn't just in one specific area. You know, they may had Active Directory uh, knowledge. They may have had Exchange knowledge. They may have had, um, you know, some you know scripting knowledge. They had all of this this type of knowledge that allowed them to come in and help many areas uh, of our teams. Um, how do you 
see, uh, how do you see the social solutions being used in the factories? This is this is Matt. I can take an initial stab at that. I mean, we're we're using them for even some of the most those basic uh, plant communications. I mean, plant managers engaging their staff, you know, using blog capabilities and the like. And then, you know, SharePoint just broadly is just helping folks with, um, you know, uh, communications of plant KPIs. Um, I, I envision, as I mentioned earlier, um, expert finding as, a, as another possibility that we haven't really uh, done anything with, but I, but I see potential future value as well. Um, you know, we we even in our business unit, 42 plants around the world. You know, you don't always know who the the best guy in gear manufacturing or the best guy that can, you know, deal with a particular problem that you might be having in Fort Wayne. He could be sitting in Thailand. And I think the more that we, you know, get folks like that collaborating um, in real time, you know, online, I think uh, the better. And I see a lot of opportunities for that. Although, you know, we we haven't really scratched the surface hardly. Yeah, from Toyota's perspective, we're, we're just now uh, on the cusp of getting uh, integrating social uh, into uh, comp being a complementary technology uh, with SharePoint. Um, so we're, we're just beginning that now and uh, really trying to figure out how that does best fit as a, in, as a role for the plant floor in the enterprise. We just have a couple of minutes left. so. Um the next question is, any plans of connecting suppliers with the system or encouraging them to use it? We don't have, uh, this is Matt from Dana, we don't have current plans for that, but certainly that's something we have talked about. So potential future capability. I don't know if uh, if Kevin, you guys have, have looked at that. Yeah, we're we're in the same situation, Matt. Well, our last question quickly then is: Can you talk more about how you're leverage, leveraging mobile devices in the factory? Okay, so I, I can start with Toyota. Uh, there's a couple of areas. One that we actually just started is a, a push to talk. We've been using radio systems uh, for you know well over 25 years uh, on the plant floor, and now we're moving those systems to digital. And by doing so, uh, this allows us to take advantage of some of the newer technologies that are available today. Um, using smart devices that have that capability, uh, like a, a walkie-talkie or, or push-to-talk. Uh, we're also using, uh, and that, well, before I get off of that, we will be rolling that out uh, across North America uh, at all of our locations. Uh, I touched on the mobility a little bit earlier, uh, but, you know, bringing things down to the plant floor, uh, like for safety or, uh, you know, reducing inspection time, uh, reducing our team members' burden and walk time, uh, you know, increasing our repair confirmation accuracy, you know, the, all the things that we're trying to do to help uh, improve our quality. Uh, you know, reducing uh, uh, inspection time and improving our, our vehicle location visibility. Uh, you know, we're also even trying to get down to where we're using mobile devices uh, to allow our engineering team members to capture pilot and process design information at the actual location in the manufacturing manufacturing process. So this allows us to also improve our, our data accuracy. So these are just some of uh, a few things. We've probably got a list of 70 applications that we need to develop uh, that will help us improve uh, on the plant floor. So uh, again, we're I don't want to say that we're experts by any means, uh, but we're we are just sort of at the beginning of, of starting many things, uh, including, you know, video training and ergonomic things for uh, people that are working on the line to show them how to, you know, do certain processes and installations uh, so they know how to do it correctly. These are just a few from Toyota. 
Well, it looks like we're out of time today. Um, I'd like to thank Microsoft for sponsoring today's discussion, our speakers for their great insights, and our audience for listening. Uh, again, all registered participants will receive an email within one to two business days that has a link to view a recording of this event. Thank you for tun tuning in, and have a great rest of your day.